please welcome Thomas. basic at least two or more people um, having a conversation or exchanging information about something can be very very mistaken and can be totally broken people talk about it all the time um, so here are the basics of them uh, there's basically two sections you need visual stuff and audio stuff and for the visual stuff there's kind of a list of shots that you're gonna need uh, I have them written down here you need double shots over the shoulder shots close-ups cutaways and then really anything else specific to the scene and then for the audio, you're going to need preferably audio for each character individually. There is options where you can do like a single boom mic setup where you'll have one audio for both characters, but it makes it a lot easier in post. Makes it, you want to make it a lot easier in post by having different audio clips for each character so that let's say you want to change the tension or change the pace of the scene, you can layer the audio more differently. Um, and it's the same with the ambiance and sound effects. You kind of just want to record everything separately. It makes your life easier in post, and you don't want to spend 10 hours in the editing room. Um, so, yeah. so here's just an example of some of the shots. You get double shots, essentially just both. You usually dialogue scenes are two-person scenes, and so you'll have a double shot with both of the characters, usually set up like this to the side, but they can be from different angles. Um, you want over-the-shoulder shots. This isn't absolutely necessary, but it gives more of the feeling that they're having a conversation because, as you'll see with my final product, if you just have a bunch of close-ups, it's kind of hard to tell the geometry of the scene, and it makes it easier with the over-the-shoulder just to tell, like, the perspective of the characters. And so here are the other kind of shots. Here are some examples. You get close-ups, ha ha, false and white, and you've got the cowboy, and then cutaways are anything relevant to the scene. So in this case, relevant to false and white, meth. And then relevant to the cowboy would be like a holster. If they bring up in the conversation something about Buster, let's go outside, they'd bring up something like this. And it just helps break up the scene so that you don't constantly look at characters' faces and it gives a little more leeway for the scene. And so, yeah, so dialogue. Um, you want to first, when making dialogue, you want to figure out the purpose of your scene. The way I did it, which isn't how they always do it, but is one of the ways you can do it, is you want to make a list of what info needs to be conveyed and why this info needs to be conveyed. Let's say you have a scene where you're having, I don't know, a boyfriend and a girlfriend meet up. What is the purpose of them meeting up? Are they just chatting for the sake of chatting? If so, that's fine, but that makes the scene a little more boring. You want to have a purpose to the scene, and you don't want to just have, oh, these characters interacting. Let's say they're interacting because you want to show character development or the chemistry between them, then that would work. But having just a scene there just for the sake of having a scene, it's a waste of the viewer's time. So these are things not to do. Don't want to include all the info and emotion just in the dialogue. As Mr. Taylor always says, show, don't tell. Don't just include everything in words. You want to show the fair, uh, character's facials and emotions. I'll get more into it when we get into cutting and the editing. But there's ways you can edit to show the emotion better so you don't just have to have people blabbering all the time. That gets boring. Um, that's also why you don't want to have them just standing and talking or sitting and talking. Have them move around a little bit. Some people talking is boring. You're not going to like, you're going to fall asleep. And then the last thing is you don't want you want to have the characters say something that makes sense for them. You wouldn't have a villain just give a bunch of dialogue and tell the hero exactly what his plan is because one, why would he do that? And two, you'd have to make the character stupid for that to make sense. So yeah, you have to do some research. Anyway, uh, yeah. So um, a big part of dialogue scenes is also screenplays. It makes it so your actors, when you actually share with them dialogue and you want to share with them a scene, you write a screenplay so that you can show them how you kind of see what's going to work out, and you have different parts of it, such as the characters, um, where the shot's going to be, and the dialogue as well. It just makes it easier and it makes it more coherent. You want to be organized when you're doing dialogue scenes. If you don't get organized and things get messy, you'll mess up some things, as you'll see. Um, just try and stay organized. That's film in general. Staying organized is always very nice. Um, and then we get to the editing. So with editing and dialogue scenes, there's kind of a flow you want to go for it. Um, with this is the visuals, these are kind of the videos. You kind of want to make sure you keep it organized where you have one line with just one type of shot. So for example, this is the close up of one character and then the second line is the close up of the other character and then the third line are cutaways. And it makes it more organized. If 
because sometimes you're going to want to edit in reactions. You don't just have the characters, like the shot on the character that's currently talking. Sometimes you'll have a character talking the entire time, and then you'll just cut to the reaction of another character when they said something. If a character said, I, I don't know, I failed a class for his mom, his mom isn't going to say something immediately, but you still want to show the reaction of the mom, so you cut to that, and then cut back to the character. And it's very similar with the audio editing. Let's say you have these two people right here, and they're having somewhat of an argument. When they're more relaxed before they ar start arguing, you'd want to make it so you would just layer the audio one by one. You keep them separately. That's why you record the audio separately. You just keep them mostly separately so they're not talking over each other. But let's say it starts getting more heated. Einstein gets mad at Oppenheimer. He starts talking over each other because that's how dialogue actually works. That's how people argue. You'd want to start layering them so that sometimes they start cutting off each other. You get more leeway with that in post, which is why you can kind of change the tension and the pace of the scene. Um, and so, yeah, this is my final thought. This is a lot of talking to you, but I won't force you at all. Let's just get inside so we can have your dinky little chips, alright? Okay, Mr. Smarty Pants. Alright.
almost everything I do. I don't like to buy like one too much, but yeah, I mean, I was I was sitting on this trip for like two weeks, and I only ended up building like a deck of those like five times. <laughs> Why, why did one scene have so much background noise and the other one didn't? Is it, so, is, is it the same spot? Uh, so the reason why is because the scene that had all the background noise was camera audio, and the other one was the lav mic. Because oh. when I, this is why you should really check your stuff on set because it was like 8 p.m. when I started editing, and so I couldn't go back and do it. And I realized that the audio files for the character with the hat were corrupted, all of them. And so I kind of just had to resort to using camera audio, which is not so nice. Stuff on set. That's also, I would have noticed the focus thing if I checked on set, but I just thought it was bad audio. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. Funny little story thing. Um, I just read about a week ago that scientists uh, tested the five second rule. Do it's not it? real. Yeah. <laughs> if it drops on the ground, it gets like 90% of the bacteria that it would get regardless of how long it is. So just if you're using the five second rule, you probably want to stop. Uh, no, I mean, I had all those chips on the ground, but then I just had like off screen a little bucket of chips that I would just go for. I almost ran out of them because I no, had but them. You, you picked one off the ground. Yeah, but I, maybe that this, this, it was a cut. It was a cut when I picked it up. Oh. Thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you.